Right. And then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? As you see, it gets in the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs. So it'll be interesting to check that. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am Jen. This is Fundy Fridays. On my channel, I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism while doing my makeup. And today I am going to do my makeup. Today we're going to be talking about Reverend Archbishop Jim Humble of the Genesis 2 Church. And for the record, all of his titles are self-appointed. Humble's whereabouts are actually unknown, although some people have speculated that he probably lives in Mexico or somewhere in Latin America. Since all of the donations that his church receives are wired through a PayPal account from the Dominican Republic. The ice cream truck is going down the street and he's got his door open, driving down the street, ringing a bell. Jim Humble is a former Scientologist as well as a current mad scientist. Although Humble's church isn't technically Christian, I thought I would still talk about him because when I started researching him, I actually thought that he was Christian because of the language that he uses and some of the tropes that are present in actual Christian institutions. But then I found out that he's just crazy and I thought I just have to share this with you guys. Jim Humble's flock tend to associate with the anti-vax crowd, the conspiracy theory crowd, and yes, uh, many Christian fundamentalists. So I'm sure that the comment section of this video is gonna be full of empathetic and thoughtful and scientifically minded comments. So people keep asking me why I do my eyeshadow before my foundation and that's because you know you get flakes and fallout on your face and then you can just cover it up with foundation and I make a lot of mistakes so. Jim Humble introduced the western world to his poisonous snake oil in 2006. He did so with the publication of his book The Miracle Mineral Solution of the 21st Century. In this book Humble claims that his miracle mineral solution which is just chlorine dioxide can cure all kinds of ailments including malaria, HIV, autism, cancer, coronavirus, and headaches. Chlorine dioxide is an industrial cleaning solution and Humble mixes it with fruit juice to help the chemical process. Every single expert and medical professional worth their salt has disputed Humble's claims and they have good reason to. There have been zero clinical trials conducted in the name of this cure. Furthermore, drinking chlorine dioxide can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, life-threateningly low blood pressure, kidney failure, and the shedding of internal mucous membranes. Many, many people have died from ingesting this stuff, including this woman who died 12 hours later after taking some MMS to prevent getting malaria. On a sailing trip to the Pacific with his wife Sylvia, friends offered her a small container of MMS MS as protection from malaria. About 15 minutes later, she began to indicate that she was feeling bad. What were the symptoms? Diarrhea, uh, nausea, vomiting, and uh, that increased in intensity. But as we saw, the Archbishop teaches that nausea and diarrhea are actually signs that the MMS is working. Nothing to worry about. Laughed off by Archbishop Grennan. Yeah, we get, go a little too fast, you get a little diarrhea, a little nausea. <gasps> they got diarrhea, a little nausea. There was nothing funny about it for Sylvia Nash. I felt her go slump and her eyes flipped up in her head and defocused. I think that's when she actually died, when her heart stopped. Right there? Right there. In your arms? In my arms, yeah. An autopsy could not determine the precise cause of Sylvia Nash's death. And the church denies MMS played any role to the outrage of her husband. MMS did kill my wife. There's no question in my mind. And now Nash is working to help expose MMS and the leaders of the church who are pushing it. Humble and his colleagues skirt the law in order to sell their bleach cure, utilizing various legal loopholes like marketing the serum as a pool cleaner or a water purifier. Humble and his church do not sell MMS per se. Instead, they have third party vendors sell it as a way of circumventing the law. Various governments have attempted to shut Jim Humble down, but the man can never keep a true huckster down. If you can't get a hold of MMS, you might be able to get it at a conference. For example, for a couple hundred dollars, you you can actually be ordained as a health minister at one of these conferences and you will be allowed to give MMS out as a sacrament. So truth be told, it can be said that the church really did form around the idea of freaking bleach than the other way around. Tell them Jesus heals you. 
while you drink this. Believers say this miracle mineral solution, or MMS, is a religious sacrament, a cure for all kinds of illness and disease, from cancer to HIV, autism, leukemia, the common cold, even hair loss. He lung cancer, he wrote me, he said, I coughed up a tumor. The doctor was flabbergasted. The tumors are gone. But MMS is made up of potentially toxic chemicals. This FDA warning calls MMS a potent bleach. You need a chemical mask. It's typically used in wastewater treatment and hydraulic fracking. The idea of people drinking bleach to cure anything, let alone incurable and complex disorders like those on the autism spectrum, is honestly the least shocking thing that's going to be a part of the story, so. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. It is actually relatively hard to find information about Jim Humble. Jim Humble's origin story is actually unknown, and all the information that we have about him comes from his own account, which has been proven to be extremely unreliable and oftentimes straight up fabricated. For example, Jim Humble claims that Moses got the idea for the Ten Commandments from him. Humble further claims that he is a billion-year-old god from the Andromeda Galaxy. He also says that he was asked to be a part of the Space Navy. He also boasts about working in the field of aeronautics and healing his own broken neck through the powers of magnetism. There was five of us went to the Milky Way Galaxy. We were gods that played and we built rivers. We went out and put planets in different places. And then I asked to be put in the uh, part of the Space Navy that watched over Earth. Wow, all that bragging? Honey, doesn't seem very humble to me. In all seriousness, the claims of being a billion years old and being a part of the Space Navy do not shock me because those claims actually line up pretty well with what we know about Scientologist beliefs. If you weren't aware, and I wish I was you, ignorance is bliss, Scientologists believe that there are immortal beings called Thetans come from volcanoes and they stick to humans like glue and that causes all of the suffering in the world. Besides believing in aliens and galactic sci-fi warfare, the Church of Scientology also maintains a private naval fleet called the Sea Org and in order to join you are expected to sign a billion year contract. It definitely sounds like something that somebody would say if they drank bleach for 20 years. Also claims to have been abducted by aliens who conducted experiments on him because honestly it would be more surprising if they didn't. Humble claims the aliens electroshocked him and sent information beams into him. The pain was absolutely excruciating. El dolor era increíble. They didn't give me anything for pain. No me daba nada para el dolor. <laughs> and they put an electrical connection on each arm. Y después puso un conexión eléctrica en cada brazo. I, I, I'm an electronic engineer, so I understood what they were doing. Does it look like Como it's un ingeniero electrónico, yo sabía lo que estaba haciendo. And they put uh, connections on my legs. Y pusieron también conexiones en, en sus piernas. And then they shocked, they put electrical shocks, but I could tell that it was some kind of information. In other words, y si, o sea, puso un shock eléctrica, pero él sabía que estaba poniendo un tipo de información. Some kind of digital information <laughs> was being transmitted into my body. Sentía que algún tipo de información digital estaba entrando su cuerpo. And I'm a doctor, After, so I know uh, where my legs were. Uh, <laughs> an eternity. Después una eternidad. Uh, of pain. De dolor. They, they pulled up the <laughs> thing out of my chest. Sacó la aguja de su pecho. There was some blood, but not much. Había un poquito de sangre, pero no mucho. Jim claims that these strange beings shot him full of information that caused him horrible pain, and then they wiped his mind. Uh, he says he was abducted at but least how, one more time. Oh, how mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. You got questions? So many things in that one sentence that you just yeah. said. Yes, that, that yes. Is like, you, if they wiped your mind, how do you know about it? How can you... Mm -hmm. Also, he oh, said that's coming that, up. That's coming up. This is an airtight story, Billy Wayne. I don't know why I doubted him. <laughs> he was abducted one more time, but he kept forgetting all this because his mind got wiped, and it didn't come back until he made friends with a couple who had what he calls a truth detector, which he describes as the opposite of a lie detector. He says that this truth detector had been tested on millions of people before him, uh, and once he used the truth detector, that's what informed him that it had been aliens that abducted him. Now... Uh, after the truth detecting, uh, Jim came to believe that the needle had been part of an experiment by aliens to see if they could kill him. Why didn't you die? 
I suspect because because I had been practicing all those years releasing the tension, como, como I didn't die. Como yo estaba practicando todos estos años para, para rejalarme, para, para sacar la tensión, no murió. And the other reason why I didn't die is because I have spiritual protection. Y el otro razón que no murió es porque yo tengo protección espiritual. I came, I came to this world espirituales. to do a job Llegó a este mundo para hacer un, un trabajo. With many other people. Con muchas otras personas. And thousands of people have already come to me and said, I know you came and I came with you. <laughs> Humble started his personal journey into madness in 1996 when he was mining for gold in South America. He writes a lot about mining in his book and it seems that throughout his life he used it as a way to make money to fund his various experiments. And if you want to read his book, it is in the info box below. On his trip through the jungles of South America, Humble brought with him what he refers to as stabilized oxygen. Stabilized oxygen is a solution of hydrogen peroxide and other compounds, including sodium chloride. And people claim that this helps with jet lag, fatigue, altitude sickness, headaches, hangovers, youthful skin, energy, and insomnia. The Federal Trade Commission has prosecuted some makers of such products for making blatantly false and unsubstantiated health claims. Although the FTC has not banned the sale of such products. Humble goes on to claim that he had plenty of experience with stabilized oxygen and that he actually had a friend who had injected it into his dog's veins. Then his dog was cured within several hours, although it is of note that the illness that this dog supposedly had was never revealed. For all we know, Humble's oxygen may have actually cured the dog of a terrible disease we call being alive. Humble also claims that his use of stabilized oxygen completely cured the malaria that his fellow gold miners had. And no, he has not provided proof of the validity of of any of these claims. His book is full of unintentionally hilarious quotes like these. So I put 10 drops into a glass of water, waited for about eight hours, and then I smelled it, like chemists do. I am an inventor, not a doctor. I don't even know what the Hippocratic Oath says, and I am not trying to do what doctors do. Within two weeks, his cancer readings began to reduce. The high reading was 82. Whatever that means. I set up tests for A-bombs and that sort of thing. So I did have some experience at doing tests. Guyana is the country just south of Venezuela on the east coast of South America. You probably remember it from the story of Jim Jones and his cult. Sorry if that accent sounded like James doing Michael Pearl. I was trying to sound like a little old man, which is what Humble sounds like. Humble also mentioned in his book that he wanted to create a computer virus, essentially, that will spam people's contacts about information about MMS. I suppose that makes sense since the Venn diagram of people who drink bleach and people who send money to Nigerian princes is a circle. So at the time, my plan was to still get this information to the world one way or another. I developed a plan where I would put some of the story on the internet to be distributed throughout the world. The way I planned to do this was to have the information in an email ready to send out to the world. I wanted it to be distributed similarly to the way viruses are often sent. When a person received this MMS information, it would have a tiny program that would allow the person who received it to easily send it out to every email address on his computer. But of course, he would be in total control. A person would only have to push one button and the complete information concerning using and making the MMS would go out to every email address on his computer so that he designated. You see how fast that could propagate across the world? It would go fast, but there are disadvantages. A book is even better because not nearly the amount of information in a book can be put into emails. Wow, he sure loves emails almost as much as David Liebehart. Emails like speaking telepathically through a machine. Staying in touch is using email better than your best dream. I can't anymore with this stupid book. I don't know why we're talking about it when I could be showing you his expansive catalog of videos where he boasts about the miracle healing power of bleach. Basically what you did then was you figured out a more powerful delivery mechanism of the chlorine dioxide that the stabilized oxygen was delivering in the first place. Yeah, it was a simple thing, although it took me about a year to figure it out but any good chemist would have probably figured it out in the first day but uh, my chemistry was limited to uh, to um, a metallurgy and so I a lot of chemistry I really didn't understand so it took me a while to to um, uh, realize what to do to it but the simplicity of it was as you simply add some uh, uh, vinegar or some uh, 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 lemon juice and the acid in the vinegar or the lemon juice releases the chlorine dioxide and that that is what uh, uh, does the work chlorine dioxide 
Now, chlorine dioxide is not the same as chlorine. And everybody gets really, really afraid of, uh, of um, chlorine dioxide when they hear what it is, but it isn't the same as chlorine at, at all. It doesn't create the, uh, the uh, um, chemicals that chlorine creates in the body. Uh, or in, in water purification systems. Chlorine will create, in most any water purification system, several carcinogenic, uh, uh, you know, cancer-causing uh, chemicals. But uh, chlorine dioxide does not. And it's, chlorine dioxide is as different from, from uh, chlorine as table salt is different from chlorine. Table salt is sodium chloride and so it's made from chlorine so uh, it's they it's quite different from uh, from uh, chlorine and uh, it's uh, uh, very very effective now i am simply a humble reverend but i am not a doctor so to make sense of all these pseudoscientific claims i'm going to call my favorite pharmacist fellow virgo and member of the official fundy fridays fan club Emily. Hello, Emily. How are you? You look good. Good. Check out this new drip I got today. I'm never taking it off. So, what is your official title? Uh, doctor of Pharmacy. So, we should trust what you have to say. Yes. So, what is MMS? Is it safe? Does it have any usage beyond poisoning people? Disclaimer, the products that we're talking about today, they have no scientific evidence towards their efficacy, so I'm not gonna be recommending using these products right out of the gate, if that's what you're looking for in this video. But we're gonna be talking about specifically some adverse effects that the FDA has seen and documented very well, and the dangers of these products. Okay, so what is sodium chloride? So sodium chloride is a salt that is used as a disinfectant when dissolved in water. It it is also used to treat water, to purify water, and it has a few other uses, but mostly industrial uses. Can you explain what happens when Jim Humble mixes sodium chloride with citric acid? Jim Humble's saying when he mixes sodium chloride, and that's the main ingredient in his Miracle Mineral Solution, he activates it with citric acid, and then when the patient ingest that, whether it's oral or rectally, then it creates chlorine dioxide, which has antioxidant properties, oxidative properties, and he claims to kill every pathogen and cure almost every disease that a person could have. It's true that when you add sodium chloride with an acid, it doesn't necessarily have to be citric acid, but that's what he uses as either lime juice or lemon juice, it creates this chlorine dioxide. That absolutely is a true chemical reaction. So then in the body you get this byproduct of chlorine dioxide and then table salt which he claims that's how you know that there's nothing wrong with it because it just turns into table salt in your body. That does not seem to be the case. Based on many FDA warnings about these products and specifically at high doses, both of these products, sodium chloride and chlorine dioxide, are bleaching agents. Chlorine dioxide in the body has been shown to literally erode the intestinal mucosa and sometimes comes out in like these long strings that almost look like a tapeworm being passed through the body. But it's literally just intact mucosa lining that's falling out of the intestine. Now, most medical professionals would say that is a horrible adverse reaction, and he claims that that might even be proof that this medicine is working, is when that happens. So that's terrifying. So how are they allowed to even sell this stuff? Specifically, the FDA does not allow a medicine that does not have proper studies done to claim that they cure things. And on the packaging, it doesn't say that it cures things because that's literally illegal. But they claim it on Facebook, they claim it on Reddit and 4chan and all of these mom blogs. People don't know who to believe. They don't know who to believe. They don't know whether to believe the FDA when they say absolutely this product doesn't have any efficacy proven or believe the mom with six kids who doesn't believe in vaccinations. Here's the issue with this product. 
People are trying to use it to cure horrible illnesses. Now, if this is a disease that is terminal and someone takes it as a last womb effort, I can't blame them for that. But the issue with it is that people are choosing this product over seeking the right treatment, which is prolonging the time that they actually get the correct treatment, if they ever get the correct treatment before they die. And so progression of an illness with this magic miracle mineral solution is just is not safe and it scares health professionals because people don't do the correct research and they believe these people that are just making a quick buck on selling you disinfectants in a bottle that claim to be a miracle and it's really sad okay thank you so much for enlightening us see you later see ya in both his books and in the clips available online, which I'm not going to show you, Humble has instructions on how to create MMS yourself in your own house. It, if not done correctly, this procedure can actually result in an explosion. And chlorine dioxide is a poisonous gas, so it should not be played with like a toy. Soon after Humble discovered MMS, and I mean discovered in the way that Christopher Columbus discovered things, he took it upon himself to poison the good folks of Tanzania, Uganda, Guyana, Kenya, Malawi, and others. Humble and his crew are very proud of tricking vulnerable people into being a part of these inhumane and unethical human experiments. I've tried my best to explain it, but I found this video by Miles Power that actually puts it into much better words than I can. How these charlatans purposely designed an experiment to con people into thinking that this industrial bleach can cure their malaria. Local people first heard about the trial on a local radio station. When they arrived, they were registered and received an initial examination to determine their symptoms and to record their diagnosis. Interesting choice of words, but that's what the video says. Next, everyone was given a antigen-based rapid diagnostic test. Those who tested positive were given a dose of MMS and told to return the next day. Really strangely, those who tested negative were told to go for a second medical examination and then, for some unknown reason, were also given MMS. Even babies were given this bleach for no reason. This is backed up by one of the Red Cross volunteers, a woman called Kirsten, who wrote about this in her now deleted blog. Tested negative or positive, people were given purified water, which was prepared by Ronald, Anno, and me. Thereby, the amount of drops of water purifier varied by age and malaria status. After taking the purified water, people were also given bottled water to take home as they had to drink a lot for the chemical to take action in the body. Kirsten also documented the initial reactions of those who took part. The immediate reactions after taking the purified water were worrying to me. People disliked the smell, taste, and some children had to vomit. Unfortunately, we had to tell people that these symptoms might carry on at home for the day. The people who initially tested positive for malaria returned the next day and were tested again, this time using a blood smear method. Of the 154 people, 11 people still tested positive. However, this, at least according to the video, was because they received too few drops of MMS. On the surface, this looks convincing. However, there is a fundamental flaw in their methodology, which I believe was done on purpose to deceive the viewer and the vulnerable people in Uganda. The antigen-based rapid diagnostic test they initially used should only be used for screening and shouldn't be used to diagnose anyone. The specific test they used in these trials detects the malarial histidine-rich protein 2, which is expressed by one of the five malarial parasites. The manufacturer claims that it can be used to detect the presence of five parasites in one micrometer of blood. However, this malarial histidine-rich protein 2 is secreted by the parasite into the host bloodstream and can persist circulating around the body long after the parasite has been cleared out or its numbers greatly reduced. This means that just because a person tested positive using this method doesn't necessarily mean that they're infected at that specific moment in time. This is why these rapid tests are intended to be used for screening and that any positives must be confirmed with an alternative testing method. Another problem with relying on antigen-based rapid diagnostic tests is that in malaria endemic areas like Uganda, malaria transmission is so intense that a large portion of the population is infected but not made ill by the parasite and it is thought that up to 42% of Ugandans are actually hosts to the parasites. Such carriers have developed just enough immunity to protect themselves from the malarial illness, but not from the malarial infection. These malarial infections would have been detected by the rapid antigen test, but not by the gold standard for laboratory confirmation, a blood smear. 
This is where a drop of blood is smeared on a glass slide and stained before the number of parasites are physically counted. So if you haven't figured it out, this is how they fake their results. They try to convince the viewer and the Ugandans involved in the trial that the positives obtained from the rapid screenings on the first day were accurate. They then retested those who tested positive using the blood smear method on the second day and discovered, as you would expect in a malaria endemic area, that the vast majority were false positives as they fell well below the threshold. They then purposely misaccredited this drop in people testing positive to the MMS they were given between testing. You know that guy from the video? Yeah, he's dead. I know. I don't know, why didn't you take MMS? The legitimate medical staff and governments of these countries are not happy with these bleach mongers and for good reason. What Humble and his crew did amounted to conducting human experiments on unaware participants and it is made even more egregious by the fact they exploited a region's battle with illness to sell their fake cure. Humble of course will tell you that they didn't want him there because Big Pharma doesn't want him out there curing malaria so that they can sell less medicine. So let's get this in context. The World Health Organization, which is the biggest multilateral association in the world that deals with all matters relating to health. All right. It publishes figures every year which demonstrate that the biggest killer on earth is malaria. Mm -hmm. And a couple of decades ago, you came up with, you rediscovered a very simple, very cheap formula for eradicating malaria in a couple of hours. Exactly. Get someone off their deathbed in a couple of hours. That's right. And you proved it out with many thousands of cases. Exactly. You did it under the aegis even of governments in some cases, or mm -hmm. authorities, so-called yeah. authorities. And then it was crushed. You went to the UN, you tried to deliver this gift to humanity, and it was crushed. That's right. All right. But Jim, the powers that be don't like this kind of language, apparently. No. It's not good for business. Right. Right. It's not good for business. <laughs> right. <laughs> In the United States, it is actually relatively easy to get MMS because of freedom or something. You could get it from a sketchy person at a health shop, making it yourself, or you can get it on a website that is named after a rainforest. The US government has tried its best to remove Humble's presence from the web, but as with all removals from the internet, it seems to be an uphill battle. YouTube removed many of his videos, but as soon as one goes down, 30 more pop up. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you that there are already websites and forums dedicated to keeping the fallacy of MMS alive. Humble isn't making the videos, rest assured his fans are. So let's talk about the religious aspect of this this church. The name Genesis 2 is a misnomer. They are not quoting scripture. Instead, the name comes from Genesis meaning beginning and 2 meaning second beginning. So it's a second beginning of a world without diseases. Hey, you don't have to tell me it's stupid. I'm the one making the video. As a member of Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing, you are exempt from vaccines and the consumption of MMS is treated as a religious sacrament. The Reverend shows us his credentials from Genesis 2, but acknowledges it's not a church of the traditional sense. They're uh, presenting themselves as a church, yes, to get internationally recognized protection that a church has. During my research, I found this website called CIRAM, P-S-I-R-A-M, and it's a German-based wiki for skeptic and rational belief systems. Apparently, this site has had retaliation from the subjects that they cover, which is why they keep their authors anonymous. So it's not as prestigious as Wikipedia, but I believe that I have a reason to trust the information. And it's not like people go on the internet just to tell lies. According to Humble, the church has come to us down through these centuries from the original apostles of Jesus Christ. There is an unbroken lineage of succession of bishops for 2000 years to now. The name of each bishop is recorded. The first apostles were bishops. The Catholic church broke off from its first church 325 years AD, but the original church continued to grow until now. You have never heard of it because it is small. It embraces all denominations of Christianity and actually all religions of the world and always has for 2,000 years. I became a minister, a deacon, a priest, and finally a bishop. The church that he's referring to is actually a kind of fractured, loose conglomeration of churches. And they also go by the names of One Holy True Original Church, Spirit's Church, 
Order of the Friends of Yeshua, the Byzantine Catholic Church, Inc., the Liberal Catholic Church, the Old Roman Catholic Church, the American Orthodox Catholic Church, the original church, the one that Humble is referring to, offers different pseudo titles for the amount of $750. One of the predecessors to Humble was a bishop named James Ingle Wedgwood, who left the church due to allegations of pedophilia. This was also the case with Humble's direct predecessor, C.W. Ledbetter, who was also a pedophile. All of this talk of sexual deviance reminds me of this other quote from Humble. What was it that Jesus Christ did, first of all? Always. He healed the sick. That is what we will be doing. But there is a lot more to it than that. Do you understand the power that a church has that, that hasn't given up its power? Look at the Catholics. Their priests have been molesting women and children for centuries, and the governments have not been able to stop it. If handled properly, a church can protect us from vaccinations that we don't want, from forced insurance, and from many things that a government might want to use to oppress us. And then there's this spiritually ambiguous fluff piece starring Sasha Stone. In this interview, Jim Humble has his ego stroked next to a scenic highway in Mexico. Humble explains that he believes human beings are divine and that we were once a master race. And by race, he means species because he's specifically talking about alligators. I know. And as humans, we will eventually return to the uh, great spirit in the sky. <laughs> what is your view of humanity? What is your most reductive view of the human family uh, from your vantage point? Well, I, I think at, uh, at one time, humanity was, the human was the greatest um, um, race in the galaxy, maybe in the universe, but at least in the galaxy. And it, it uh, lost its way. And now we got to find our way back. We lost our way, Jim, or we dived into the void knowing that we were going to participate in a great cosmic experiment and one day be rejoined to the great spirit, as I believe we are today. The point of it is, is that uh, other races, like the alligator race and other races, has been involved in bringing mankind down. Now, whether we decided to go ahead and do it, or they did it to us, uh, in the long run, it was our own doing. It couldn't be any other way. We had to do it, or it didn't, wouldn't get done. An obvious question. Um, the Great Spirit, the Divine, the Godhead. I'm interested to know a little bit about your connection, your, your sense of religiosity or spirituality. Well, I have to say that mine is a little bit different than most. I believe that all life is a manifestation of God. And God, the whole of God, not, not part of God, but the whole of God is here and here. And the whole of God is playing the game from this level, in this case, and playing the game from that level, in that case. And the most important thing I think that people have a mistake with is they don't believe they're God. That's, that's the whole problem. Okay, so we're talking about, this is what brings you and me together, the actualization of self, full self-accountability in this world, stepping into your skin and owning your divinity. Yes, exactly. Right. Until we take responsibility for it until we take responsibility for having created all of this, it isn't going to be handled. As long as we say somebody else done it, it ain't going to get done. Okay. We've got to accept it ourselves. And curiously, that worldview of yours is commensurate with the most advanced quantum mechanics because that teaches us that we do affect the outcomes by simply placing attention on things. But mostly we don't own it. And so circumstance prevails and the world ends up being completely maligned into, and fashioned into the vision of greedy and ruthless minds and hearts. But when humans can step into that sovereign space 
as you suggest, and, and recognize that we are an extension of the divine, then we can actually project that beautiful vision into the field and manifest heaven on earth. Except you say it just a little bit different than I'd say it. Well, I would say we are the divine. We aren't an extension of the divine. <laughs> You're more of a puritanical than I am. <laughs> Jim Humble is getting a little too old and feeble to be hawking snake oil, so he hangs out at his apartment in Mexico, which he says is small because he says that the other members of the Genesis 2 church aren't sending him his fair cut of the prophets. Which brings me to Archbishop Mark Grennan. Grennan and his family, they are the ones that are going to various cities, having the seminars, charging people hundreds of dollars so they can become a health minister. Health minister, that sounds a lot more fake than my ordination, and mine was free. Back at the seminar in Costa Mesa, Archbishop Mark Grennan and his son, Reverend Jonathan, don't seem concerned. The Grennans say they make MMS available through their church, but insist any money collected is a donation. Everybody start a church and do it from there. You can sell them anything. Just like any church, we can sell things, but we choose to use the word donation. The father and son tell the crowd how to get creative about finding the raw chemicals needed to make MMS from scratch. I found that anywhere in the world because they use it in pools and jacuzzis. And what, what are we trying to do here? I'm trying to clean the blood, right? This could be poison if you took it at high doses, but at that percentage, it's non-poisonous. By the end of the seminar, dozens of attendees, including an Eyewitness News producer, are health ministers of the Genesis 2 Church. You guys are all part of the family now. You all have got to be health ministers. So earlier this month, August 12th to be exact, Mark Grennan and his son were actually arrested in Colombia. Colombian authorities have accused Grennan of selling MMS locally and arranging shipments from the Caribbean, port of Santa Monica, to parts of Europe and Africa. Grennan has been extradited to the United States, and that's all the information I have at this moment. If you get breast cancer, you, I don't care say deserve it, you brought it on. MMS, as well as other quack remedies, have been gaining mainstream attention as a so-called cure for coronavirus. Hell, you even have Donald Trump suggesting that we inject bleach, so I think it's gotten a little out of hand at this point. Carrie Rivera seems to be the new face of this chlorine dioxide propaganda. She runs a site called cdautism.org. She advocates for giving children chlorine enemas to cure their autism. And there are plenty of sources online that will show you the graphic pictures of how this procedure works and what happens afterwards. So I'm gonna shield you from that. Riviera loves bleaching children's colon so much that she was required by the Illinois Attorney General to sign a document stating that she would no longer promote the use of toxic chlorine dioxide or CD in the state of Illinois. Despite all of this, she moved to Mexico to get the government off her back and still maintains a Facebook page and a website dedicated to, you know, I don't wanna say it again, Bleach enema. MMS is a dangerous chemical that under no circumstances should ever be consumed. I won't say I'm shocked, I will say I'm extremely disappointed that it has made its way into alternative medicine culture. Mentally, I think I do understand why people search out cures like these. The world is a big, scary place. An astounding number of things that are out to kill us. Simple solutions make life less scary. So many people choose to instead believe that they have discovered the cure to everlasting health. But in reality, all it is is a scam artist preying on the fears and desires to control the world around us. There is no miracle cure that the government is hiding from you. So instead of drinking bleach, I suggest you hug your family tight, tell them you love them as much as possible, go to therapy to confront your existential dread, and go to the doctor as regularly as possible to buy yourself more time on this planet. And for love of God, don't fucking drink bleach. A, Let's Have a Kiki, J, Mallory B, Kathleen, Hannah, Victoria S, Suzanne K, Marie, Holly S, Jody B, X Fundy Delight, Dara K, Anna M, Ginger Ale, Hannah, Sierra F, Sam M, Madeline F, Lisa L, Nicole D, Kelsey M, Georgia H, Jenna B, Stacy, Emily S, Kayla V, Victoria, Kylie D, Shelby H, Kate T, Sarah S, Francis M, Lauren, Pam W, Angela T, Nicole W, Katrina J, Lindsay L, Taylor N, Allison J, Micah D, Sylvia K, Courtney G, Katie F, Kara D, Lizzie P, Emily H, Aubrey W, Kim A, Kaylin A, Ellen R, Chick P, Kim S, Debbie S, Lisa O, Wendy F, Ashley C, Jess L, Mel B, Liberty L, 
Deontae, Mara G, Hillary P, Andrea M, Lily A, Sarah R, Myth, Christy S, Turduck and Wrath, Kazalotl, Kate B, and Ashley D. Thank you guys so much for being patrons. I am every day getting closer and closer to being able to quit my job. So thank you guys. <laughs> and if you want to, consensually smash that like and subscribe button. We have a Discord. It's somewhat active. See you guys in September. I'll try to get a video out as uh, close as I can to the regular schedule, but we are moving next week. Um, I love all of you so much. You mean the world to me and have a very blessed day. <sighs>